Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dawnbreaker Mythic Plus Guide for Season 1 in The War Within. In this guide, we're going to talk about the most important boss and trash mechanics in the dungeon. At the start, you're going to fight few ritualists that are going to cast Tormenting Ray. This is a channel that does sticking damage to a couple of targets that you need to heal through. Their other ability is called Stygian Seed. They're going to mark a player with a magic debuff. Once it expires, it blows up and does damage in big purple circle around them. So make sure to move out quickly if you get this. If you don't interrupt the Shadow Mage and Snaring Shadows cast, a player is going to get a ticking curse on them, so make sure to save your interrupts for that spell and any spare ones you can send to their Night Bolts. Once you get on board of the ship, you're gonna fight a Nightfall Commander, make sure to interrupt their Abuso Hall. It does AoE damage and puts huge Absorb Shields to the mobs around him, so you don't want it to go off. He's also going to put a Stacking Bleed on your tank. Once you clear the deck, you have to fly to two nearby ships and clear them as well. The new mob that's introduced here is a big spider, just interrupt their web bolts. And when they cast Bursting Cocoon, a player gets marked with a big circle, run out to explode without hitting your teammates. Once you clear the two side ships, you fly back to the main deck where the first boss awaits. He's gonna cast a bunch of shadow bolts, simply interrupt those. And when he casts Obsidian Beam, three beams spawn from him and start rotating around him. Keep moving and make sure you're not going to get hit. The next mechanic is called Burning Shadow. He's going to put a debuff on a player that does taking damage and on expiration or the spell, it puts healing absorb shields to your teammates that you have to heal through. When she casts Collapsing Knight, she's going to open two portals at the feet of two players. Make sure to move out quickly so you don't take much damage and try to bait them towards the edge so you have extra space to run away from the beams. When she reaches 50 and 1% health, she's going to cast Darkness Comes. You have to mount up and fly outside of the ship not to get blown up by the big bubble that she casts. And you're allowed to do so because of a Radiant Light buff that you get. You don't want to let this expire and you can extend its duration by collecting light orbs that fly around the ship. After the explosion, you go back and you continue fighting the boss with the same mechanics. For the next stage, you have to fly down in the city and kill three mini bosses that are surrounded by different mobs. Interrupt the Dark Caster's Umbro Barrier as that puts Absorb Shields on them and heals them. And their other interruptible cast is Tormenting Beam that turns into a channel and does a ton of single target damage. The manifested shadows are going to drop a lot of swords on the ground that you need to dodge and you want to try and stun their abuse of rot. If that goes off, it puts a dot on a player that you have to heal through. The other new type of mobs here are the Nightfall Tacticians. They're going to keep casting frontals and you're gonna have to keep dodging them. The three mini bosses are spread out through the city. The first one is in the church at the top left. The second one is in a building on the right hand side. And the last one is below a bridge at the bottom of the map. The first one, Xkreten, is going to cast Abuso Blast. That's a dot on a player that also stacks if you get targeted twice in a row. And Terrifying Slam is a big circle that you need to run out of unless you want to take some damage and get feared. Viscoxria is going to cast Shadow Lady K, doing pulsing AoE damage to everyone around. And she's also going to use the Abuso Blast dot. And the last one is Ikentag, he's going to conjure a big dark orb, which is a frontal that you need to dodge. And of course, use the Abuso Blast Dot as well. Once you kill all the mini bosses, you're allowed to engage the second boss, which is now not empowered. And you have to be careful not to pull him by accident as he's patrolling the city while you're fighting the mini bosses. He's also going to conjure a dark orb, a frontal that you need to dodge, but this one explodes when it meets an obstacle. So you want to bait it into an open location. Terrifying Slam is the same big circle that you need to get out of unless you want to take some damage and get feared. The Shadow Lid Decay is the same AoE from the mini boss that damages everybody in your party and you just have to heal through it and use defensives. And there's one new mechanic which is called Animate Shadows. It summons a bunch of adds that you need to interrupt NCC while you cleave them down as they do significant single target damage. The boss will continue using those four mechanics until you manage to defeat him. After you do that, you have to fly back to the ship where a mini boss awaits. Interrupt his night bolts and be aware of his tormenting eruption. He's gonna target two players with beams doing a lot of damage to them, but they also need to spread out as the damage splashes around them. 
He's also constantly going to call for reinforcements, summoning weaker versions of the mobs that we've seen throughout the dungeon so far. That also includes all the nasty casters, so make sure to spare some CC while you're cleaving them down. After that mini encounter, the last boss comes, and in phase 1 he's gonna shoot out webs that you need to dodge. He's also going to mark a player with tormenting beam. After a short cast, waves are going to spawn from them in the direction indicated by the green. So make sure to move to the side where you're not gonna hit your friends with it. His erosive spray is a pulsing damage channel which is going to leave a stacking dot on everyone as well, so a good place to use your defensives. And lastly he's going to summon bombs, you have to pick them up, carry it to them and press your extra action button to do some damage to the boss. Failing to do so in time is going to make the bombs explode and do AoE damage to your whole party. At 65% he flies out, you have to mount up and stay close to a small ship that is going to chase him, maintaining your buff allowing you to fly. You can also collect light orbs on the way, they are going to extend the buff's duration. After you land you have to interrupt the boss who is doing AoE damage and is immune until you do so. And in this phase he gets one new mechanic, he's going to mark two players with webs, shortly after they are going to drop puddles that you want to move to the side and quickly get out of. The puddles themselves have quite large radius but if you hit them with the green waves you're going to reduce the radius a lot. In this phase there's no bombs but there's still the erosive spray and the web frontals and you keep going until the boss reaches 60% at which point you win. Another very easy win that you can score is to subscribe to this channel to find out the rest of the mythic plus dungeon guides for season 1. I'll see you guys there, now get out of here.